learning to trust yourself. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Let's get started indeed. Whoa, we are halfway through summer, people. Boy, is time a-flying. Yes, that's right. So, uh, any of those summer plans, any of those bucket list items that you wanted to do over the summer, yeah, you better uh, get going. You better start making the plans and make sure that you can actually get to them because, yeah, halfway through summer, it's kind of shocking, kind of unbelievable. Time is just going way too fast, in my opinion, but make sure that you are getting done and doing all of the things that you want to do this summer. Today, we are talking about trusting yourself. That's right. How can we learn to do that? So starting with the quote of the day, if you are going to trust one person, let it be yourself. This is by Robert Chu. And, you know, the thing about trusting yourself is we all think that it's the best thing to do to trust yourself. But a lot of times we don't trust ourselves because we don't follow through with what we say. We don't have a background and a habit of keeping our word to ourselves. And that in itself is the number one problem. So last week we were talking about checking in on those New Year goals. Remember way back in January where we said, yeah, this year I want to do this, this, and this. And how we were doing with them. Uh, how was your report? Did you even check in? Or had you given up on those goals long ago? Because here's the thing. It's not too late. We still have the rest of the year to make them happen. But you need to ask yourself why you gave up on them. Did you hang in there for the first couple of months and then get tired? Or did you quit almost right away? Look, change is hard. No, it's freaking hard. And you have to have a game plan on how you will keep going through the tough times. You have to anticipate the obstacles that may come along so you know how to work around them or through them. But the very first thing you need is trust. Do you trust yourself? Do you do what you say you are going to do? Do you follow through with the goals you set out to achieve? Do you make good on the things you tell others you will do? Are you reliable? Because here's the thing. Your brain knows. It knows when you say you are starting a healthy eating plan and workout regimen on Monday, and then you don't. Your brain knows that in the past, if you say this on numerous Mondays and you don't, your brain knows that you're full of crap. It knows because of your past behavior. It knows that you are all talk and no action. In essence, your brain is laughing at you. When you say you are going to do something and your track record shows you don't do what you say you will. If you want to change, you have to really want to change. You have to be willing to do something different. You have to show your brain and yourself that you really mean it this time. And start showing up for yourself every single time. You have to go about it differently. What is a plan that is going to work for you in the long run? Because just because all of the other plans didn't work doesn't mean that there isn't one out there that will. So what's going to work in the long run? No more quick fixes. No, no more plans to just get off a quick few pounds by starvation mode. And then I will get on a healthy eating regimen. No, just no. This time will be different. This time it has to be. It all starts with habits and discipline. So I'm going to tell you again that hitting the snooze button, yeah, one of the worst things that you can do. 
especially on a daily basis. You are breaking the very first promise you are making to yourself in the morning. And that is what time you're going to get up. And I've got to confess to you. I will tell you I have fallen into a terrible, terrible habit of turning my alarm off and going back to sleep. This has not been an an issue for me for decades, for decades. I've always gotten up immediately when my alarm goes off. Now, granted, I had a job to get to, so that made it a little different. Now I actually can go back to sleep because I have many hours before I actually have to be somewhere. And the other thing is lately the dog has been getting me up in the middle of the night and I have a hard time getting back to sleep right away. So when that alarm goes off and I'm still so, so tired, I justify to myself that I didn't get the amount of sleep that I should have. So I turn the alarm off because I have removed the snooze from my phone, which you can do. You can remove the snooze button. And then I go back to sleep, which is probably worse. And that really screws up the rest of my day. I'm off schedule. I end up skipping a lot of what I had planned. But yet it still seems so alluring to turn that alarm off and just get a little more sleep. So I know how you feel. I know it's hard. And um, unfortunately, it's something that can always pop back up even after many years of it never being an issue. And I am proof of that. So do not give in to temptation. Get in the habit of getting up when that alarm goes off. Don't set it early and justify to yourself, oh, well, I'm setting it early, so I'm not really breaking my promise to myself because I know that I'm going to hit this news alarm three times. Just don't do it. It's not quality sleep. You're just putting off the inevitable. It's really just a form of torture. I know it feels so good to go back to sleep, but again, it's not good sleep. You're going to wake up again in another nine minutes. And at the time, that feels glorious. But all in all, is it worth breaking your promises to yourself? No. No. Don't give in to temptation. It just starts your day off as planned when you hit that alarm off and get up. It is the way that it should be. Get up, go to your routine, and get everything done before you need to walk out the door. No more rushing around, trying to make it out of the door on time so you won't be late. No more skipping your meditation practice or writing your gratitude journal because you didn't have time. It is a habit that needs to be broken. No more snooze. When it comes to trusting yourself, start out with something easy that you know you can follow through on. For example, you could start your day with a big glass of water first thing in the morning. Do it while you're making your coffee, waiting for the coffee to brew. Drink down that glass of water. You're uh, tacking it on to another habit that you already have. And you do it every day before your coffee. It is a great way to start the day by the way, and then your brain starts to realize that you are finally doing something that you said you would do, that you are following through, and then you add something else that you stay committed to. And keep in mind that every time you don't follow through, that you are reinforcing to your brain that you can't be trusted and you don't do what you say you will. Start small. Take baby steps. It's the only way to get lasting change to take effect because there is no point in rushing something you want to last forever. And I'm going to say that again. There is no point in rushing something you want to last forever. Think about that. You want to live a nice, long, healthy life. You can't rush that. If you would like some help learning how and doing what it takes to start trusting yourself, reach out to me to see if you would like me as a personal accountability coach. Just go to my website, hopeless.com, and click on training. There are a number of different options 
to choose from. Now, if you like today's episode, please, please leave me a review. Tell your friends about The Hopefulist. Subscribe or follow the podcast if you haven't already. You will get the brand new episode every single time it is released. You will be one of the first ones to do so. And as I mentioned, please, please tell your friends about me. Uh, Share some of my stuff on social media and get the word out. Let's make The Hopefulist a household name. That would be so cool, wouldn't it? So we are halfway through summer. As I mentioned, I hope you are making the most of it. And I want you to go on out there this week and be badass. You know I'm here cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Now, don't you feel good? Make sure you come back next week. See you then.